So we moved into a hotel. I moved those blanks inside of a storage unit. So I'm I'm making custom items from the hotel during the day, packing the blanks in the storage unit during the um evening time. But when I went to the storage unit one day, because I'm still thinking about quitting, like just nothing is not moving fast enough for me. Yeah. But I went to the storage unit and I seen a lady, a baby and her husband stand in the storage unit right next to the, the unit I'm working out of. Mm -hmm. So I'm telling myself, like, that could easily be me. Like, and they were living in it. They were living like, in it. Like they ain't they, they working. They were, they were comfortable. Living. Yes. Like they was eating in there. Like it was they. That was they like it was sad, and I'm just sitting here thinking like I'm complaining because I'm in a hotel, but at least I got like a bed to lay in. Yeah. So I just like I gotta do something. I gotta do something. So I went back to my hotel. I turned on my camera. I didn't even know how to go live then. <laughs> Hey, what's going on, fam? This is Lamar Tyler, creator and founder of Traffic Sales and Profit and host of the Traffic Sales and Profit show. We are back today. Now, today you should only listen if you like to make money. Did you catch that? You know, I want to make sure. Only if you like to make money should you listen because I got a dynamic guest, right? One of our TSP Collaborative fam. And she's going to break down her amazing story plus how you, if you are creative, if you are a crafter, right? Any, any, any crafters or creatives in the building listening or watching us on the show, Today's episode is all for you, and it's all about overcoming adversity. Where you are in life right now does not dictate where you can go, and I got the perfect person for that. Welcome to the show, Cassandra Smith, right? Uh, founder, CEO, visionary behind Blanks Galore Academy. What's up, Cassandra? Hey, Lamar. How you guys? How are y'all doing? Good, 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 good. So thank you for doing the show, for one. Thank you for having um, me. You be busy. So <laughs> they, they, You be busy. They, they can get down here. Uh, You're welcome. But I want to talk about, for the people... All the things that you know, right? You know a lot about business, a lot about crafting, this amazing multi-million dollar business you built in a short amount of time. Yes. We talking like last two, three years, right? Yes. Short amount of time. But then I also first want to talk about your story to get there. Because mm -hmm. I think a lot of people will look at people and say, well, it's easy for her. Right. She got such a great personality, right? Oh, you know, it's easy for her. Uh, she got a husband and support. It's easy for her. You know, she got all these, you know, family that's working and my family don't want to work in a bit like all of these things, but they don't know your backstory. Right. So let's go back a little bit. Um, I want to start with like how you even first got into crafting. So my son and my daughter had a basketball game and they um, teammates was wearing uniforms. I couldn't afford the um, hoodies that they had to wear. So I had to find somebody that was making their hoodies for them. So they made the hoodies um, and I started going to her to make more of my custom shirts after a while. But then I was like, man, I wonder if I can get into the business myself and make my own kids hoodies and more hoodies like that. I went to her for advice to see like what I needed to get into this t-shirt business, what equipment, what resources, what supplies. Um, and she didn't tell me. She was like, look, I can't tell you, you know, you got to find out just like I did. So that's exactly what I did. <laughs> she, she just pushed me out the interstate. Yeah, right? she was <laughs> like, you're not finna, uh-uh, you're not finna take, because you know, people feel like that, like, you're not finna take food out my mouth. I introduced yeah. you to this and now you want to do it. So like, no, you got to find out on your own. So I started researching YouTube and, and that's when I started doing um, vinyl shirts and it took off. But then in 2019, that's when I got into sublimation. Like that's a different type of craft where you take the special ink paper um, on the design, apply it to the shirt and then you print it out and it's beautiful. So I got into sublimation in 2019. The business was going good. Uh, I ended up doing a thousand dollar week in a week, a thousand dollar in a week and I quit my job. So hold on right there for a second. <laughs> So a thousand dollars in a week. When you did that thousand dollars in a week for the first time, how did you feel? I felt rich. <laughs> <laughs> I felt really rich. But now, now, what was that like? Because you were working a nine to five at the yes. same time, right? So what was that like in comparison to? Was it like, hey, this is more than I make? Was it like, hey, this ain't as much, but I see the vision. That I could make more if I had more time. Like, what was what was going through your mind? At it that was time? more than I made. Like, I was only making that kind of money every month. Wow. So I made it in a week, and I was thinking to myself, if I spent more time at home working on my business full time, if I made this in a week, what could I make in a month, in a year, working for myself? I walked off that same week, that same day. That same day. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay, hold on. I got, oh, I got so many questions. All right, this is about to be an interesting interview. I hope everybody's listening and locked in this. So when you left, what did you tell, I guess, your boss, your supervisor, your employee? you like, deuces, you know. I was at my desk, actually, in the, like, I'm, I'm supposed to be working, but the orders kept coming. All I'm hearing is cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. And I walked in there because previously I was trying to ask them, because I had been there for two years already, am I getting a raise? They was giving everybody else raises around me. So I kept wow. asking them, like, the whole month. So that day that I seen those orders coming up, so I'm gonna give them one more chance because I'm already a foot out the door. Yeah. I'm gonna give them one more chance and see if they're gonna give me that raise. So I walked in there and was like, hey, have y'all heard anything yet about the raise? Oh, we're still thinking about, okay, well, this is my last day. I'm done, I'm walking out, I'm not coming back. As a matter of fact, here's my notice. I gave them a same day notice, not 12 weeks, here's my notice. So what if they would've said, yeah, here's your raise? I probably would've stuck around. I probably would've, you know, I probably would've stuck around to see, cause you know, I still was using my nine to five money to fund my business. That's so good. Yeah, that's I probably good. would've stuck around a little longer. Okay, so so, yeah. so before we, I, I got so much I wanna get into. Before we go forward, let me go another step back to what you said. When you first went to the woman that was doing the hoodies and shirts for you, and she wouldn't share the information. No. That's wild to me, cause I always think about how people are so closed off with what they know. Mm. But at the same time, there's so much business out here. It's no way, okay, if the two of y'all doing shirts, like the two of y'all can't handle the amount of people that need nope. custom shirts or hoodies or socks nope. or whatever else. Nope. You can have 20 of y'all in the same market. Like it still does not matter. It's still, yeah. Yeah, so, so that's just crazy to me whenever people think like that. Right. Um, but that's wild. All right, one more thing before we go, because my mind is just racing. <laughs> Back to the $1,000 a day. What did you do? to get that? Like, what what did you do different to kind of set everything off? Do you remember? So first, um, I unfollow everybody that was my family or my friends that I knew wouldn't support me. And I started following strangers on Facebook. Mm. So I would post my custom items and then I would start following people that I knew would want it. So say, for instance, I'm posting everything with baby pictures. I started following moms with kids. Oh, that's so, good. So when they follow me, they'll be like, who is this girl? And then when they look at my page, oh, she made custom baby items. So the order started coming in like that. And then I started posting on Facebook Marketplace, everything Facebook. I started posting on pa Facebook Marketplace and then the orders was coming in from there. So it was just unfollowing my family and friends that I knew wasn't supporting and then just taking that chance and following strangers that would probably want my items. Ooh, that's so good. <laughs> All right. All right. So we did that. You walk off the job. So you walk off the job and you take this thousand dollar day and you immediately turn it into a million dollar year? No. <laughs> that's, no. Not, that's not your story. That's no. somebody's story, but it's not your story. No, that's not my story. I actually took that thousand and balled out. Like, I ain't gonna lie. Because that was the first time I ever made that kind you of You was like, money. oh, I'm about to make this again next week. Yes, I'm thinking like, okay, I made it in a week. Next week, I'm probably gonna make 2,000. But it didn't do that because in the craft world, like, um, we have our slow seasons. Okay. So good. the time that I quit, it was around the holidays. So everybody was wanting like holiday items. But after the holidays, it goes slow again, unless it's okay. football season, basketball season. I didn't know that. I just knew I made a thousand dollars. So I spent that money and I'll say about a couple weeks later, that's when I ended up not being able to pay my bills. I couldn't go back to work because I don't got fired. I don't walk off the same day. So it got really hard. It got really, really hard after that. At that time, were you second guessing? Yeah, I was like, movie? why did I do that? I mean, first of all, I got the job just because of, I ain't gonna say I knew the person, but when I walked in, I told him my backstory, like, look, I don't have a degree. I don't really have a lot of experience in corporate office, but if you gave me this job, like, I know um, I'll do a good job. So I quit the job knowing I don't have a diploma, a high school diploma, or a degree, or any experience. So I'm like, who's gonna hire me? Like. Mm. All I know is I walked off this job. That's bad. So I couldn't go back to work. So I'm like, man, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? So it was ugly. Okay. So that, that does, and thank you for your transparency, right? You're so welcome. that's good. Cause I think a lot of times, even when we make mistakes, we don't like really sit in that mistake mm -mm. and think about it. Or we like, hey, it ain't no big deal. But you're like, nah, this, like, this really is a yes. big deal. And if you don't really pay attention to what happens, it could easily happen again. Yeah. And it may happen all for the right, right reason and things could work out. But it's like a lot of lessons in life yes. in general. So I love the fact that um, you slowed down for a second and thought about like, hey, what am I doing? But at the same time, it sounded like you was in the low point. I was mm. very low. And you talked about you had a son and a daughter. Yes, well, at this time I had my son, it was just my son with me at the time. And I'm sitting here thinking like, I can't pay these bills. 
I can't go back to work. We about to get evicted. What I'm going to do. And I just was like, what? I'm sitting at home thinking, okay. Because, you know, that's when you start. When you're at your lowest point, yeah. you're like, okay, I got to do something. So I'm sitting Especially at when you're alone, you got time in your hands. Yeah. Because... <laughs> that's the worst. It's like you working. Like, you can't even really think somebody. Somebody, right. somebody coming up to you at your desk or messing with you or right. people telling you to get your stuff done. But when you, when you just got you. It's just me. And I'm at home. Like, what am I going to do? So I started thinking, okay, the items that I use to make my custom items. What if I bought them wholesale and sold them to the craft community? Because I'm selling the t-shirts, but it's other crafters like me that need these blank t-shirts too. So I started wholesaling those items and business took off a little bit, but not a lot. So um, I still ended up getting evicted. So we moved into a hotel. I moved those blanks inside of a storage unit. So I'm, I'm making custom items from the hotel during the day, packing the blanks in the storage unit during the um, evening time. But when I went to the storage unit one day, because I'm still thinking about quitting, like just nothing is not moving fast enough for me. Yeah. But I went to the storage unit and I seen a lady, a baby and her husband stand in the storage unit right next to the, the unit I'm working out of. Mm -hmm. So I'm telling myself, like, that could easily be me. Like, and they were living in it. They were living like, in it. Like they ain't standing they, there working. They were, they were comfortable. Living. Yes. Like they was eating in there. Like it was they. That was they like it was sad, and I'm just sitting here thinking like I'm complaining because I'm in a hotel, but at least I got like a bed to lay in. Yeah. So I just like I got to do something. I got to do something. So I went back to my hotel. I turned on my camera. I didn't even know how to go live then, but I'm like, <laughs> yo, what's up, y'all? I'm just crafting, you know. I'm showing them my heat press in the hotel room. I'm what y'all doing? And then people started asking like, well, can you show us how to do this next? I'm like, oh, they want to see me going live more. So every day I'm going live now. This is how you do this. This is how you do that. And now it got to the point where I'm like, well, if this many people tuning in, because it, it went from 10 people, 50 people, not hundreds on my live because I'm teaching mm. free classes. I'm like, imagine if I started a paid course program, like, would they want to do that? But I did the free lives for like a whole year straight. Like, mm. no, not even trying to make any money. And what, what year was this when you this started this? This was 2020. So this is like... This is like last year. I mean, it ain't last year, but it's like right around the corner. This yes. Is like, this is not like 10, 15, 20 years ago. Yes. This, this is like two years ago. Yes. Wow. Okay. 2020, I'm doing the live. And then I was like, hey, y'all, I'm going to start a paid course program. Who would all like to join? At this point, I done gave away so many free classes. They knew her paid class is going to be bomb. So, and they probably your tribe. They probably they rock with you. They were my tribe then, yes. You know their names. They yep. know you. Yep. Now, at the time, did they know that you were doing this from a hotel room? Did no. They, did they know your backstory? No, because I was ashamed to tell them. So I would put a, I had a BG backdrop behind me. So anytime I went live, I would put the backdrop up. And all they seen. And seemed, BG's Blanks Galore. Yeah, right. Blanks Galore, yeah. So all they seen was the Blanks Galore logo in the back. Wow. They did not know I was in a hotel until one day I did go live and I made a mistake in the, the backdrop um slipped a little bit so you can see <laughs> <laughs> you can see like the hotel bed in the back and the table yeah. but they wasn't even paying attention at okay. the time they just like look she's showing us how to do something when that slipped in the background was you like oh it is what it is or were you I like mortified like, like oh my I cut god. the live <laughs> I cut the live like oh my god what are they gonna think of me now like Oh my god, like they gonna think I'm poor. She getting on live like I used to get on live dressed to impress like this. So mm -hmm. you would never think yeah. I was going through what I was going through. So I was like, what if they seen that bed? They gonna think I'm, you know, somebody I'm not. So I, I cut the line. They were like, Coach, where you go? Like <laughs> technical issues. <laughs> yeah, right. It was <laughs> done. It was done. <laughs> Did you like what you just heard? Well, let me tell you about this real quick. We wanna expose you to something that's amazing, and that is the TSP Mastermind. If you are a business owner that's trying to reach your next six, seven, or eight figures in business, and you're looking for a community of like-minded, purpose-driven, and ethical entrepreneurs, then guess what? You're in the right spot. We have a 12-month program with one-on-one -on -one coaching, accountability, trainings, events, and more in order to help you reach the next level in your business. For more information, visit www.trafficsalesandprofit.com. <laughs> so wow, so 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 this is so good. So it's because even in your story, it's so many nuggets. Yeah, it's so many like lessons about not giving up, yeah. about facing adversity, about having your back up against the wall, about gratitude. Right? Like, hey, I see somebody. I'm in a bad spot, but I see somebody doing worse. Yes, and that could easily be me. So let me like you know take advantage of what I have, yeah. and just just I just want to commend you just for doing it. Like a lot of people would have been in that hotel room balled up in the fetal position. Oh, I was. 
but but not doing the work part. Oh yeah. I mean, you did that, but you know, you got up and was like, all right, let me cut this live on because I got to do what I got to do. Yeah. And having having that peace. So like I said, it's it's like you went through all the things and all the emotions. It sound like, but you still showed up for yeah. yourself. And for, you know, your son to be like, hey, we, I got to get us out of this situation. And that's what it was for me, my son. I kept mm-hmm. looking up because, you know, we had a double bed. So I would look at over there with him and it's like, dang, he and his, we in this nasty hotel. I mean, it was just, I don't know if you know about efficiencies, but they mm-hmm. are not the best. So I'm just looking at him like, he do not deserve this. Like, because of my mistakes, because I quit my job, I couldn't afford to stay where I'm at. Why is he going through this because of me? And I asked him, I said, Nari. Do you want to go stay with your auntie until I get straight? He was like, no, I'm going to stay right here with you. Right with you. Yep, mm-hmm. we're going to do it together. And that's when I knew, like, if nobody else believed me, this boy believed in me, and I got to do it for him. So I was just about to ask, just perfect second, I was about to ask you, at the time, what other people, did other people know what you were going through? What did they say? Was it like, girl, you was crazy? What were you thinking? Or was it like, hey, we got you, we're gonna support you? Like family, friends, like, or was you like, you hid it all from them? Like, what was that? No, I told a couple people. I even got to the point where I was like, yo, I told someone like, can we just sleep on your floor? Like, you know, mm-hmm. we just don't want to stay in this hotel. And this is it's it's it's, it's expensive staying in hotels. So yeah. I'm like, can we just sleep on your floor? And they was like, well, no, cause my kids got to play on the. It was like, mm. wow, what did I do to you? I can't even sleep on your floor. Okay, well, can you just let my son? They didn't even want to stand there. So it was just like, I felt like I had nobody. Like, it was nobody else's problem. I put myself in this situation. Yeah. I can't be mad at the world. I was, but I was like, I was the one that put myself in this situation. So I got to deal with this. But yeah, I had a few people that was like, no. Well, let me ask my husband first and see if you can stay. Huh? Like, we have nowhere to go, but y'all don't care. Okay, cool. Okay, so... You go from doing the lives for roughly about a year or so. Um, so now we're in 2021. And you say, hey, I'm gonna launch courses. Yes. And, um, cause of course they were the first thing you sold to people other than just the sublimated shirts and things like that. Right, it was the blanks and then it was the courses, yeah. Okay, so tell me what happened when you launched the courses. Uh, we had did like a live, like a live lunch, just saying, hey, everybody that's on this live right now, we're gonna give you out to midnight to join. And we was only accepting like a hundred people. We, we got that, we hit that number in probably like, I'd say about a good hour. And mm-hmm. we shut it down after 100 signups because we just wanted to see like how soon would people join. And they joined, 100 people joined within an hour and we shut it down and it was just, it, it went good from there. Mm. So what's your mind like at this point? <sighs> I'm still blown. Because I would imagine you'd be nervous leading up to it because you're like, hey, at this point, had you already gotten out of the hotel or are you still in the hotel? Um, No, I was out of the hotel. Okay, so you're out of the hotel. But you kind of transition to a new thing with with the with the launch. Yeah. Um. It goes well. When it goes well, are you reflecting on that thousand dollar week? Like, <laughs> hey, I can't. I don't trust it. Or are you like, nah, I know I turned the corner. Like, like, where, where are you at mentally at that point? Oh, uh, I was just still scared because I don't see how when you can yeah. get to this point and then you make a quick decision based off of what you you know the thousand dollar week. Yeah, the money's coming in now, but I can easily lose it. Like in the back of my head, that's how I'm thinking. Like, okay, they paying now, but. What if something happened? Like, I'm always a what if, like thinking the worst case scenario. I was just about to ask you, does that still impact you, you think? Yeah, it does. Even now, the level of success you have is like in the back of your mind, like, hey, this could come. Yeah, and this could I go. still, but but now I think I prepare for it better. Yeah. So I don't, like before when I made that first thousand dollar, I started balling out. Now it's like, <laughs> <laughs> I hold my coins so tight, you can't even borrow five dollars. Like, I just never know. You just never know. So I don't spend as much as I used to anymore. Like, they really taught me a lesson. Okay. So we go from you launching, the first launch is successful. Uh, what what happens next? Um, so it's just ba- building a community and building like what we see today with Blanks Galore and Blanks Galore Academy and the Facebook yes. groups and everything. So it's the community, they inside of the group. But then every time my student would say, okay, well, coach, we learned how to do this. What about this? Like, what's the next step? Because now they learn how to make custom items. But how do I become legal? How do I get my business started? How do I order inventory? So everything that they asked, we didn't pile it all into one course. We created a whole new course for them to level up to that next stage. So they leveled up from tier one to the next tier. After that, we started another tier. So everything they asked, mm. we just kept coming out with that next. So t- tell me the difference in the tiers. So the them. first tier is where you just learn how to craft. Okay. Um, you learn everything craft related. You learn how to sublimate, do vinyl. You use your Cricut, your Cameo. But then after you learn how to craft, you want to learn how to get legal. 
So the second tier, we help them set up their business articles, their LLC, their EIN, their website. After they get legal, then they say, well, what if I want to get into wholesaling or what if I want to get into teaching? That third tier, we teach them how to become a craft coach or a wholesaler. So it's just like baby step. You mm -hmm. learn the craft, you apply the craft, and now you're selling the, the knowledge of the craft. Mm, I love it, right? So people can kind of just go, like you said, step by step yes. to graduate as far if they want to go, right? Some people yes. might just say, hey, I just want to do it and use it as a hobby. But some people may say, hey, I want to be serious about this thing yeah. and build an empire, you know, leave my nine to five and do this full time. You right. give them the ability no matter, you know, which level they at inside right. of the programs. And we have a lot of people like that that's just like, look, I don't want to make no money. I just, this is what helps me with my depression. I just want to do a hobby. So we let them stay in that tier one. But then you have people that's like, look, I want to be like what you are. How can I leave my nine to five or... How can I get legal? So that's why we created different tiers so we didn't put so much pressure on the people that just want to stay at the tier one level. That's good. So when to you did you feel like business blew up? Because you ain't just like, hey, I just out here, I got to sell, I sell a couple courses. You out here doing it. Like, right. like, like what year was it? And what, and what was it? Was it, it probably wasn't eight. It's never one thing. It's always like the culmination of, hey, I built this community for free for a year. And then I did this and did this. Right. But at what point were you like, wow, okay, we, we maybe made it the way I want to, but we didn't. Right. Done some things. I would say 2021 when I hit my half, a, first half a million dollar month. Wow. That was just, that just blew my mind because I went from. A thousand dollar a week to now, I can't even say how much times is that. I can't do the math right quick. But when I seen us doing the a half a million dollar month, that's when I knew like, okay, this is serious. Cause it was way after the pandemic. Like people okay. are saying, oh, this is a pandemic business. So you when the yeah. pandemic go down, your business like no, we in twenty twenty one. I mean the pandemic's still going on, but it's not as heavy. Right. So when I seen that I did a half a million dollar month, um, in twenty twenty one, I knew like, okay, this is getting really serious. All right. In that year, what'd you end that year with, if we can talk about it? Um, 4.5. 4.5. Yes. So from $1,000 a week to not having a place to stay, mm. doing live, starting lives in a hotel where they don't even know you in a hotel. You glammed up. <laughs> you in a hotel, right? With your son, you know, one bed away to doing 4.5 million. It had to be some point where you sat back and reflected on that. Maybe shed a tear or something. I it was did. like I did. And I still reflect on it because, you know, just me, like I said, going from a home. And I don't cry. Ugh. But because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I reflected on it now because I have to remind myself. Sometimes we get so busy, you know, we mm, hitting good. that kind of money. We want to keep hitting it that we don't even take a break. It's just like going, going, going nonstop. But I had to reflect recently, like, you know, just me staring where I'm at now looking around my you know where i'm at in life just like wow like i can't believe a couple of years ago i was literally in a hotel room no money just trying to make it had a vision that nobody else could see and here i am now today that i'm helping other people that have those same visions that nobody else could see letting them see that it is possible so you know that's good and that reminds me of something uh ronnie recorded an episode that we're gonna release soon and she was talking about the fact that sometimes entrepreneurs forget where they come from. Mm. And she said the same person that like would have died to make 15,000 in their business for the year, right? May do a launch or may do a webinar or they may do like one thing that day and make 15,000. And they like, I can't believe I'm, I, can't. I can't believe I only made 15. But they like, like if you take yourself back to like just that a few years true. ago, it's just like, like, what did you do? Like, it's like one hour of like being on a live or a webinar or, you know, like, like two or three emails or something over the course of a weekend. Yeah. And we'll be like, I can't believe this is a That's total it. failure, right? Like, I'm never doing that again. But she's like, like, literally you have to think about how you were regarded that same money just a short time ago. Yeah. And that, I mean, that sounds like you took me right back there yeah. when you said that. So I love it. All right. So, so, um, I want to ask you what's next and then I want to get into some things that the people can do and learn from. But like, like what's next for you? Like what's the vision for what you see Blanks and Lord doing? Um, right now we're just trying to um, get new people in so they can know about the craft. People still don't know about the craft industry. They look at it like, oh, it's just custom t-shirts. Like, no, it's really more to that. So my our goal is just to get more people into the program so they can know exactly um, how to craft. Like you said, it is a recession coming up. Mm -hmm. So just letting people know you can start your business now. You can start that website now. Like, don't wait till later. Because if I would have waited, right. you know, if I would have waited till later versus 
you know, starting my business and then when adversity came, quitting, I wouldn't be here where I'm at now if I would have just kept procrastinating. So the goal is just to get more people in to see that, you know, you can craft too because a lot of folks don't even know how creative they are until they get in our program be like, wow, I didn't know I can do that. I didn't know I can make that. So just getting more people into the program. Um, getting them hip to the products that we sell because we also provide the products they will need for the program. So just okay, like what type of things? So we sell the sublimation ink, the sublimation paper, the sublimation blanks um, to go with the sublimation classes. So we provide everything they need from the products to the education. So just basically getting them inside of the program. And what I what I love about y'all business also, because I know it's a lot of online trainings and courses and things, and a lot of times like like I'm a I'm a visual person, so I just do way better. If I like can see stuff and touch yeah. stuff, then I can't just hearing it. But I love the fact that y'all actually do in-person classes too. Yes, we do. Thanks for bringing that up. So yes, <laughs> <laughs> so yes, we do have the hands-on classes right here in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, we've been actually packing that out. Like I don't know what's going on, <laughs> but we have been having no seats left when well, it comes I, to I that. think it's that right because like I think it's a lot of people you know. And, you know, I, I got a ton of courses and stuff, online courses I buy, but it's nothing like that. Hands especially on. like when you're trying to learn something like that. I mean, the value of being able to come into your space and learn from people that not only do it, but do it at a high level. Yeah. And and being able to see and touch and look at the equipment, even the, even the equipment. You know, we had a, a T-shirt brand. We used to do a heat press shirts years ago. But I had a, lucky for me, I had something that a lot of people don't have. I had a real good friend that was real successful in shirts. So she told me, hey, this is the press to get. Hey, go ahead oh, and get transferred. You. She told me all that, but I still had to figure it out because she was in DC, I was here. Okay. So I still was like fumbling around with it and calling, like, hey, you know, what's the temperature ain't right? What temperature you want to be on? And, you know, I, mean, I know a little bit about this. Oh, I see. Like, you know, talk about temperature. Okay. I'm like, how long should it be down, right? Like, the stuff ain't right. You know, so I, I still had to fumble around a lot, but probably not as much as most people because I had somebody at least to call. Yeah. But it would have been just so valued to be able to just go in for a weekend. Because even once we got that, we started moving the shirts, and it was like, all right, should we do mugs? But it was like, we don't know how the heck to do mugs. Like, yeah. Like, I see the stuff online, but like, which one is the good one? Yeah. Which one is the bad one? Like, like we didn't, even I remember when we upgraded uh, heat presses one time, we just took a gamble because I was, I knew our heat press wasn't good because we just started like this little cheap $250 heat press off Amazon. Yeah. But it was like other presses, it was like $1,500 and more. Yeah. But so I was like, I know they better. But I don't know what's better about them, right? Yeah. So, so like I said, if, even to be able to come into it and not just go through the process, but I hope the people come and learn that, like, hey, just the fact you get to touch the equipment. Yeah. Just the fact you get to see, like, hey, this is the equipment I saw online. Like, what's the difference between this one right. and that? And it wasn't until, like, hey, when I got, uh, I don't even know how much the one we bought was, when we got a better heat press. I remember, I'll never forget, we got, a, we got a better heat press right before Black Friday. Because okay. the previous Black Friday, we sold like a lot of shirts, right? So we was like, all right, you know, we need to tool up. We're going to have two of them, X, Y, Z. We get the new one, and we literally are now with the new one. We were able to, to um, press three shirts in the time it took. Really? The same person could do three shirts in the time it took <laughs> to yeah. do one shirt. Because it literally, like, the old one would take, I think, like, uh, 24 seconds. Right. The press, the new one took eight. Oh, wow. And it opened on its own, which was like, oh. ah. You know, we was all. Oh, you had the iron family. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, you know, but, but again, right? Like, we ain't had nobody to ask. Yeah. So, for crafters to be able to, you know, like only take the course, but come into your space and, and see y'all actually doing it and teach them. And, you know, to me, it's just, it's just so valuable. And that's know. why I did it. Cause, like I told you, with the first person that I, I went to for information, she did she acted like it was G4 classified. Like, I can't tell you. <laughs> so, I knew that when I got into this space and I started learning, I'm going to create a platform or a space where people can come in and learn for, you know, yeah. not, I'm not going to say for free, but they can just learn now versus going to somebody and they, they don't want to tell them. So, I'm, I wanted to make sure that when I got to this level, I'm going to make sure that I'm able to teach people, you know, without the hassle. That's good. So, let's talk about it. If it's a crafter that's a, a hobbyist, Right. And they say, hey, you know, I make this or I make that, um, but I want to make more money doing around what I'm doing. Like what's some of the first steps they should take to get serious about being in business? Um, definitely establishing an online presence because um, a lot of people know how to make stuff, but they don't post or they don't promote or they just like nobody knows that they make these custom items. So that's what we teaching them now is 
um, creating content around the custom item, not just showing people what you make, but showing them how to wear it. How will it make them feel yeah. using the right hashtags, the right captions, the right photos, like all of that plays a part. So we teaching them that now, not just making a craft, but the business side of crafts when it comes to trying to get that money in. That's good. I, I, I tell people all the time, I think one of the biggest things we see with entrepreneurs, because they got great products and services, but just yes. nobody know. Mm. And like literally, like, like if they making crafts, but they can't get it in front of people, then you know, I'm right. about to say what's the use of making them, but I know crafts, <laughs> hobbies, they love, they love the work that they do. They yeah, they love like, the work But they love the work too. <laughs> but again, even if you love creating craft, what would it be like if that's all you had to do? Because mm. a lot of people that probably love it, but then hate what they do nine to five. Right. Like I think you give them an opportunity to do what they love all the time. All the time. And just like live in their passion and be able to help other people and bring them into it and be able to serve other people. Yes. Th that's good. When it comes to them, um, being able to, to 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 sell and market, right? Like what are some strategies you've seen that work well for them to be able to just get more sales? Um, so we basically tell them to go to where their customers are. So we teach them how to go to other Facebook groups. So say for instance they make custom coffee mugs, join a Facebook group for coffee lovers. That makes and, sense. Yeah, yeah, and promote it in there or um uh, we also teach them how to set up their own um vendor like if they go to vendor events, pop up shops, how to yeah. set up their tables to just getting out and showing people your product. So not necessarily having to always promote online, but you can get out in the field and actually promote your product at events. So we, we teach them so many different ways to just try to get their products out there. So That's good. I, love, I always tell people that vending is interesting because it gets you a chance to touch your people mm. and like just learn so much. Yes. You know, even if you don't always do it, like it just it's just something about it because you get to, you know, online, we like, we think this is our person, we think that's our person. Yeah. But you literally had the people come up at the table and they telling you what they like and what they don't like and they yeah. touching stuff and looking at it, right? And and you can just get like so much more research and data yes. from just being in those spots. Um, that's good, right? Now, what do you do for or what do you tell those companies that say, Hey, you know, I'm here, I'm crafting, I'm making money. Do you have those people come in and say, hey, I'm trying to reach the next level? Like, yeah. what does the next level look like for, for maybe somebody that's already doing, maybe they already left their nine to five and they're doing crafting full time, right? But like, they want to kind of blow up and get to the next level. So we got some of those too. So we try to teach them how to um, target other businesses. Cause when you come into the crafting mm -hmm. industry, you're making custom items for consumers, meaning, you know, you might just wear my shirt and, you know, go to a birthday party. You don't really need the item. But if you're trying to get to that next level, we teach them how to target other businesses like corporate offices, going up there, showing them, hey, I can put your logo. Basically, like how y'all have the TSP right. book yep. bag T-shirt. We're teaching them that, like start targeting other tar start targeting other businesses and promote their items, promote your items to them and say, hey, I can put your logo on this. Or, you know, if you know somebody that works at a corporate office, I can make coffee mugs, mouse pads, whatever corporate offices need. So just teaching them to target other businesses now, don't just stick to regular customers. I, I love that. You know what I tell people all the time when I think about things like that is don't think about it. Don't try to convince people by talking to death, but you got to show them. You got to show them. Like you, you got to show them, yes. right? It's nothing like somebody getting something and it literally having their brand or their logo yes. on it. Because oftentimes, again, I talked about I'm like a visual person. Somebody could tell me like, yeah, it's going to look like this, going to be this, going to be that. And I'm like, all right. Yeah. You know, but I'm like, I don't need that because because I didn't wake up this morning thinking I need branded pins and shirts and book bags or whatever it may be. But if you show me that and I see it and I fall in love with it, now I got emotional attachment to it. And it's so much easier for you to get to sell. Speaking of that, this is so what I did to you is an, an example, <laughs> right? But this is what I teach them. Like, don't ask for people to be like, hey, can I add your logo? Take their face in their logo, put it on the shirt, tag them in it, and watch the wow. And what happened? You seen the shirt when I was showing your yeah, you face? Got, you got to tell the people. You got to tell the people what you did, right? Because you, you, I just thought about that minute when we was, we was talking. I was going. I was going to say something to you. Did it ever ship? I know I, I got it. It came, okay. it came like Friday. So I had took a couple of your pictures and I took your logo and I made an all over design. So that's what we teach them how to do too. How to okay. design. So we made the all over design T-shirt and we pressed it to the shirt and then I took your voice that was on another reel of yours. Added it to the um, shirt and I just rebuild it and just basically letting you know, like, you know, not you, but in general, yeah. we let other people know, like, we can put your logo, your face on your shirt. When you want to rock your brand, you the best person to rock it. So when I showed you, like, what what came through your mind when you seen the actual reveal of the shirt? With your you face know, it? it was a few things. <laughs> For one, I was surprised 
because I got tagged. I get tagged and stuff all the time, right? So I was like, what is this, right? Yeah. And I got tagged. I was like, hold up, this is me, right? <laughs> so that was like the first thing, like surprise. Then it went from surprise to gratitude and appreciation because I was like somebody taking the time to even do that, right? Yes. Like, like that was a major appreciation. Then it was excitement, right? Because I was like, oh, I got people. People got to see this. <laughs> like, people gotta, they got to see what's going on, right? <laughs> so I shared it. And when I shared it, the reaction was crazy yeah. to people seeing it. Because I thought it was a big deal. But you know, when you think it's a big deal, everybody don't always else think it's right, a big deal. Right. I thought it was a big deal. So I put it in the Travis Sales and Private Facebook group. I put it on my personal page. And it just was like, everywhere I put it, it was like, brrr, like yeah. just comments running down the page. So yeah, it like it it did exactly that. And, and, but but again, right? I think it's it's the thing of just showing somebody. Yes, the visuals. Because if you'd have been like, hey Lamar, you know, would you like me to make a shirt? Whatever. I'd be like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> but it, it's that piece. So it came in Friday to the office. Uh, we were having a meeting, and Ronnie put it on and came into the office. And oh! I mean, <laughs> she wore it, like into the meeting. Oh, so yeah. and that's what I wanted to make sure. I'm like, let me put her put his wife on there too because yep. it's no TSP. But exactly. that's what I teach them. Like you have to just take that risk and show them what you can make. Don't talk about it, be about it. But you don't want to also make regular shirts because you have people that make just a logo. Yeah. But this is something we teach them an all over shirt. You don't see that often. So we teach them different ways of how to craft. And just real quick for rap, right? It's not even just shirts because I want people not to just think, hey, oh, it's right. shirts. I know when I came to your office, I saw basketballs. Yeah. I saw blankets. I mean, what, what other type of stuff? Uh, tumblers, coffee mugs, um, shoes. Book bags, luggage bags, anything you can put your face on, you can put, you can craft and customize. You and it's a huge it market for this because I've I've seen, um, like I said, not just people, but like I said, sports teams, it's business corporation. Yes, I've seen in your community because I'm part of your community. In your community, I've seen people doing um, uh, bridal showers, weddings, yes, baby, you know, birthdays, baby reveals. It's just all these special moments, yes. and people want something to kind of commemorate that. Yes. And you know, they come to people in your community. Or the people's listening to say, hey, you know what? Like, I, I want something unique. Yes. And they make those unique pieces for them. This is good. If somebody is uh, watching right now and they say, hey, you know what? Her story inspires me. I want to get going, but I'm not sure if this is right. I'm not sure if I can really make it. What would you tell that person? Um, I would just say you don't have to be great to start, mm -hmm. but you got to start to be great. That's my favorite line of all times because... We be telling us, we be tricking ourselves most of the time. We be our, we be our own worst critic. Like we can actually do it, we if we put our mind to it. But just us sitting here thinking, like, I don't know if it's gonna be any good. What if nobody don't buy it? What who gonna like it? Like we start convincing ourselves that it ain't gonna be good before we even do it. So mm -hmm. that's why we do offer the free classes. So we don't just say go straight into crafting we give them like a couple of free classes that they can sign up for just see if they even like it get the feel of it and then from there they can move on up to the next tier but i just say just get started like i love it and where can they get a hold of these classes at at courses.blanksgalore.com so y'all i'm telling you make sure you go to the site courses.blanksgalore.com get a hold of the free courses right get a hold of the pay if the free, if you get value from the free courses i can only imagine what's going to happen when you get into the paid courses and i want to speak again to the crafters because you have a unique opportunity most people don't. You can literally make money from something that you love to do, and many of you would do it anyway if you made no money. So imagine if that's all you had to do, nine to five, right? You can pour into it, you can live that lifestyle, you can learn more and become even better and more skilled at the crafts you do. And our, you already know the appreciation that people get when you give them your items. Imagine now, besides the appreciation, it's a paycheck mm. attached to it. That would be good, wouldn't yes. it? Yes. I saw your hand moving back. You was like, hmm, that was good. Yes. Like, so listen, y'all, um, make sure you get a hold of the site. Uh, can they join the Facebook group and stuff too? Yes, the free Facebook group is called Blanc Galore Academy. Um, anybody can join. I think we have like close to 90,000 members wow. in there right now, yeah. All right, y'all. Yeah. So make sure you get a hold of it. Everything, the link to the courses site, the link to the Facebook group, the link to follow uh, Cassandra online, everything is down below in the show notes. And I want to say appreciate you again for joining us, right? And guess what? You got to get started. What was that quote? Let's end that quote one time. Tell you don't have to be great to get started, but you have to start to be great. Boom, that's it. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on another episode of the Traffic Sales and Profit Podcast. Don't forget to download and subscribe on your favorite podcast platforms. Also, visit us at www.trafficsalesandprofit.com forward slash podcast. 
on that page. You'll have all the links to follow us on social, me at Lamar Tyler and the at Traffic Sales and Profit brand, in addition to information on our upcoming events, information on how to get a free copy of my paperback book, and more so that you can be the best entrepreneur possible. Thanks again, and I'll see you on the next episode.